The lady that stood here is my wife, and uh, she's special to me in many ways. You know, she decided that she will love me unconditionally, and that she will believe in my crazy dreams. Yes. And so when I told her that uh, I was going to convert our garage into a studio and that we will be transmitting an FM signal from there. Yeah, she was like, um, yes, 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 yes. Okay. And I thought, oh, it was so easy. And so for two years, we transmitted an FM signal from our garage. Okay, it was a studio. We set up a studio. We transmitted an FM signal from, from our garage and we were covering parts of Elgon View, parts of Langas, all the tables, going down to Capsarate. And uh, it was really interesting. Elder Masinde is not here. They were part of my audience. Norma said, are you in the house? She would text and say, we are hearing you clearly. And a few others, I might not be able to mention. My, my brother Laban Tanui, they were my regular clients, I mean audience, and they would text and say, oh, we are getting you, it's clear. And they really encouraged me. Praise the Lord. And so we did that for, for two years. And one day bad weather came and it destroyed my transmitter. You know, so I post, I post. Yeah, but we'll continue, right? Yeah. We've just post. <laughs> we praise the Lord. And so today, uh, by God's grace, I have an, uh, this great opportunity to be helping us understand media and communication. And uh, this happens to be our last topic on Engage 2. But apparently, I'm well informed that it could as well be the last on safari. So just let me see how many of you followed safari from where we started Engage. Let me just see. Yes, quite a number, quite a number. And how many of you got safari midway? You're not able to cover everything, but you followed safari from midway. Let me just see. Yeah, there are. And uh, our visitors, you don't, you, you are here, you are hearing safari for the first time and you don't understand, I'll explain, right? Are you here? Visitors, we didn't acknowledge you. Are you here? Yes, quite a number. They are all over. Quite a number. And so safari is a discipleship program that uh, Sitam decided to bring to our congregations so that people would have personal growth. Our congregants would have personal growth and also live a transformed life. It's not just about us, but it's also about us influencing other people. And so it's a journey that started many years ago, around 2015 there. And uh, we've been looking through, you know, uh, in specific time in the year, not that, not, it's not that we do this every other Sunday. We've been doing this, you know, in a programmed pattern. And so it's something that we've been doing. And uh, I can't bring everything that has happened in the last many years in one sitting, right? And so I would advise that if you can log on to our, our sit-up app, you can go to the Safari app. And there, you will get the entire material from Enda, the five. You know, you'll get them there. And you can be able to interact and also allow the Holy Spirit to work in you to bring out the kind of person that God would like to use in this generation. And therefore, allow me to help us understand the mountain of media and communication. I want us to explore the mountain of media and communication and understand how we can influence this mountain. 
we've posed a discussion question up there is is media good or evil now i leave that to you for now you'll know I'll, I'll not ask you to to tell me you are you are you are you are understanding but by the tail end of this this uh, topic today you'll be able to understand whether it's good or evil right and uh, so maybe just to start us off i want to help us understand the meaning of media and communication what is media and what is communication media simply refers to the medium or means medium or means of message delivery system to reach a vast majority of general public or targeted audience now the people who have been in a factory setup know that the use of conveyor belt makes work easier we have a factory right here rivertex and you go there and you'll see conveyor belts running from one end to the other and so media is like a conveyor belt a conveyor belt that passes a product that's called communication okay conveyor belts make work easier and smoother if you, if conveyor belts were not there we, people would be forced to be carrying products from one end to the other maybe on their shoulders and would have time wastage you know some would fall and spoil and, and and break things but conveyor belts enable things to be uh, to move faster and smoother and so in this case on the communication on media as, as communication and media platform the media becomes the conveyor belt for communication and i'll explain what communication is communication is delivering and receiving message through media it is also the studying and understanding of political cultural and social issue communication comes from the root word commune which means to share or a conversation between friends and so communication when you're talking about communication communication is 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 made even more effective on the platform of media media becomes a springboard media becomes a springboard for communication now if i did this hallelujah hallelujah now i'll be struggling to to to, to pass my voice but i have an instrument here that is helping me not to shout a lot okay it's facilitating my communication it becomes a medium but again what my cameraman is doing here is helping those people who are not physically in this place to be reached and so that becomes another medium and so that medium places me in places where people who are not able to be here right now they are, they can be able to follow this proceedings yes they can be, fo- be able to follow this this service and so that is a medium and there are many other mediums that we'll be looking at but before we go into other mediums is communication a work of men or communication has been there through ages let us look at the scriptures and understand whether communication is a man made idea or whether communication has been there the bible says in the book of psalms chapter 1 verses 2 that the heavens declare the glory of god the skies proclaim the work of his hands day day after day they pour forth speech night after night they reveal knowledge what that means is that heavens have a channel god uses the heavens as a channel to declare his greatness heavens declare a communication a uh, provision skies proclaim proclaiming is a communication provision day after day pour forth speech pouring forth speech is a element of communication 
Revealing knowledge is an element of communication. And therefore, communication goes beyond humanity into divine paradigm. And God has a way of using channels that are beyond our channels to communicate his purposes. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, chapter 1, verses 2, God at various times and at various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets. The prophets became a channel of communication and has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Now, his son is another medium of communication. And so we are seeing God using various channels. He used prophets at some time, at you know, times past, and then the Bible says currently he's using a channel that is called Jesus Christ. And Jesus said that if you ask anything through my name, praise the Lord. And he also said, I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit, a channel. And so if you want, God speaks, God speaks, but we have a duty to tune in the right channel. You don't just turn your TV on and hope that you'll be there finding the channel that you're looking for. You have to tune into the channel. When you're tuning your radio, you have to tune into the channel that you want. And therefore, God operates through channels. And we have to be, you know, quite aware that we can't just reach unless we tune through the, the right channel. You ask through the name of Jesus, a channel. Praise the Lord. And so, that beside, that, let us put that on the side. Back to our paradigm. Back to our paradigm. What are some types of media that we have around us? Some types of media. Now, in generally, media can be classified in three main categories. Number one, print media. Print media. When you're talking about print media, we're talking about newspaper, magazine, books, banners, billboard, brochure, flyers, anything that is printable. Those are print medias. But we have another, another level of media. It's called electronic media. Now, this one covers electronic technology. Electronic te technology. We are talking about TVs. We are talking about, you know, radios, anything that's on that level. These mediums are covered by, they are called electronic media. Broadcast media takes advantage of electronic technology. You can just put that in your notes. Electronic technology. And so, it's another wide area. But we also have another one that's called new media. New media. Now, new media, new media is what we refer to as social media platforms. The social media platforms. Now, the social media platform, you're talking about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, mention them. There are many, so many. All those ones put together make for what we call new media. And so new media is a catch-all term. A catch-all term used for various kinds of electronic communication that are conceivable due to innovation in computer technology. But we also have another one. Number four. Now those are the, the three main ones, but number four, the word of mouth, where we all are, right? You're also a medium of communication. You communicate with your mouth, right? And there is also another one, the you media. Now, when you don't use your mouth, either you're using your body, positioning, postures, movement, hands, facial expression, those are also medium of communication. And so we are talking, uh, Martin Luther said, you are not only responsible for what you say, but also for what you do not say. And so when you don't say anything, we, will, uh, we look at your face and we'll know that you're saying anything. We look at your posture, body posture, your body movement, and we'll know that you're saying something. What is the influence of media 
and communication in our lives. Does media and communication have any influence in our lives? We will get to know. Media generally influences and defines character of people geographically. Media influences and defines characters of people. You know, we put things on media and uh, sooner or later, people start believing those things and sooner we'll find that our character, the character of our people are based on the tests, on the values that they have learned from the media. Africa is a beautiful continent. Apparently, Africa has received bad publicity. People think that Africa is a hostile place. People fight here, guns, bombs. People think that Africa is a jungle, animals. Because that's the image that we've given out. People think that here people are starving, they are dying. Because that's the image that we've given out. And somehow, that has also formed our character. We don't believe that we can. We always hope and ask for help. Musaada, to partie. You know, it has now formed, you know, the character of the people. We are a begging, a begging continent. You know, because of media influence. If we can change that attitude, I believe we have what it takes to grow and become a bigger, you know, we can be fighting for the same space with those big, big brothers of ours. Media is primarily used to transmit the agenda that controls the way people think politically, scientifically, business-wise. Media is the tool that is used to, you know, transmit these agendas. Number three, media is significant force. Media is a significant force that has the capacity to create significant to, to create and significantly change cultures. Media is a significant force. In 2017, you not believe that today people will be wearing masks that will be washing our hands, that will be sanitizing everywhere. Media was used as a platform to you know, just create that awareness. And today, it's all over. It's all over. Media is a significant force. It would have not been possible if media was not there to help facilitate this. And so the bottom line here is media in itself, following the question that we had, media in itself is neither good or bad. Media like culture is neutral. Media is neutral. Junk in, junk out. Virtue in, virtue out. Media is not bad, or media is not good as per se. We, media depends on what you put in. And so what do we mean by the term media culture? There's a term, a term that's called media culture. Media culture. What do we mean by that term? I'll give an example here. In, in 80s, for those people who are old, in 80s, being neat, being smartly dressed, meant that you'd have a nicely ironed trouser, a nicely ironed shirt, you would comb your hair, you would look nice. That was then. Today, fashion has taken a different dimension. Now we've seen you know, beauty shops, you know, you know, fashion designers sell tattered clothes. <laughs> yes. They sell, you know, clothes that are shred, you know, worn to shred, rugged, and they are fashionable, right? They are fashionable, and they are very, very expensive pasta. They are in shops. You know, in 80s, that kind of cloth belonged to the dustbin. Yeah, today it's fashionable. Yeah. Why? Because media has created that image. Yeah, media has created that image. And therefore, media culture refers to the culture that, that, 
uh, media culture refers to the culture created under the influence of mass media. The culture that is created under the influence of mass media. The concept of media culture infers to the impact of society, information, consumption, and intellectual persuasion. What we are saying here is that there is a lot of information on the online space. A lot of information. Media culture is the dominant form of culture which socializes us and provides material for identity in terms of both social reproduction and change. What do we mean here? We mean that what we mean here is that media dictates how people think. It's a dominant form. And so anyone who is not up to speed with the change imposed by media is considered backward. Today, if you don't have a smartphone, if you're using Nokia 1100, if you're using Nokia 1100, people will think, what? Badoko uko. You know, because media, media is a dominant form. Today, media demands that you be on smartphone so that you can access apps, so that you can access this thing, so that you can be current. Media is a dominant form. You know, it pushes its agenda. Media culture tends to be a major factor in the formation of mainstream culture since it affects society's opinion, values, tests, and attitude. Now, look at the people and you will tell the effect of media on their lives. You look at their tests. You look at their values. You look at their opinions. You look at their attitudes and you will tell the effect of media in their lives. Media has pushed them where they are in form of making decisions, in form of how they think. Now, previously, television was considered as the key driver of media culture. However, currently, media culture is highly influenced by new media platform. New media platform. TV was the thing then. TV was the thing. You know, we used to have things that are called higher purchase. And you'd commit your salary on paying for TV. Yes, and they would be deducting that from your salary. What was it? Something like kukopesha, you know? Those, yeah? Yeah, those ones from that generation understand what I'm talking about. You know, TV was the thing. And TV defined people. Today, things are changing. New media has provided many platforms. There's what we call TikTok. Yes, you do your things and you press them, you get many likes. You get many likes, you know. And anybody today can be a journalist because of the new media platform. You know? And so, the bottom line here is that media has power to influence people positively and negatively. And we are going to look at those areas. The negative influence of media and the positive influence of media. But before we look at that, what does the scripture, what does the word of God say? Because our balance is in the word of God, right? Our balance is in the word of God. The Bible says, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Quite mouthy, but I will break it down. I will break it down. The Bible says, who, in other words, Woe to those who bring confusion. Woe to those who bring confusion. Who, in the place of good, they are blessing evil. In the place of the light, they are bringing darkness. In the place of 
sweet, they are bringing bitterness. And so their stand is not clear. Growing up, growing up, we had a song that went viral in our days. There was a song that went viral. And uh, I would not wish that this song be sung on anyone here because the song was, in our childhood understanding, it was comical. But when I grew up, I started to understand that the song was very, very serious. Yeah, the song was very, very serious. How, how, you know, as much as it was comical, it was a very, very serious song. And so the composer of the song decided to compose a song. And a man, a man would bleat inside. Me. Umeji vali angozi ya kondo. Me. Kumbenda ni ni umbu wa mwitu. And another one would back. Woo, woo. Kumbenda ni ni umbu wa mwitu. Woo, woo. Now we laughed at that song. I laughed because it was comical. And we enjoyed the voices. But today, I don't wish that anybody says that you come to sit and akumbe, umeji vali angozi ya kondo. Me, umeji vali angozi. No? Right? And so, when we go there, can we determine that the light that we see in the church here can also be seen out there, right? Using our media spaces. When somebody looks at you, a good brother in the church, a good brother in, in, uh, here, a good sister, and they're following your Facebook, and they say, hey, I thought that this brother, who am Okoka, and somebody posts on your, you, on your social media, uh, and you're like, ah, you know, okay, that, let's, that, what, that we leave for another day. Now, media can be a time waster. Media can be a time waster. Averagely, and this, uh, this, uh, this sample was taken in America, that people spend close to six, eight hours on social media. Now, that's America. Here in Kenya, it could be 24-7. Yes, it could be 24-7. People stay permanently on media. It can be a time waster. Media can be used to promote evil. And I'm telling you, you go on any platform, social media platform, and you will not ask for the enemy to knock on your door. You will see pictures prop, propping that you did not request for. The enemy is active on the social media. You open a Bible verse, but there's another advert that doesn't conform to Bible principle. The enemy is active. Yes, media can be an idol. Media can be an idol. And today, let me tell you, you can't believe yourself without data and without a smartphone. It's like data and smartphone is part of your being, part of your life. Data and a smartphone. Yes, we've come to that level. That data and smartphone make for our lives. We've come to that level that when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you do is your hand falls on a smartphone. Yes. And you're not praying what's going on around the world. Media can be an idol. Media can be a channel for falsehood. We've seen a lot of perpetuation going on on the, on the media space. TVs with questionable doctrines have been you know, opened and allowed to function. You know, false doctrines thrive. We had a lot of prophecies during the pandemic. Prophecies during the locusts, prophecies, and people were thriving, falsehood was thriving on the media space. Media can be used as a falsehood channel. Media can entertain gossip and slander. Because we have itching eyes, 
um, ears, because you have itching ears, we always want to hear, what did he say? What did he say? Ali Mujibu, you know? Today, he says this, a politician says this, and tomorrow you're on TV. Mutuetu ame Mujibu. You want to hear what your man will respond to. You know, because of our itching ears, and we want to hear gossip, we want to hear how people are tearing each other. We want to hear how people are you know, maligning and uh, you know, defaming others. And media prov provides a platform for that. Media provides a platform for that. Media can be a platform that feeds anxiety. A platform that feeds anxiety. Fear. Fear can be generated. Fear can be generated. Now, in 2019, in 2020, when, we, when, when COVID was now declared a pandemic, you know, we thought that by now, a half of the world would be gone. Yes, fear was casted out. We thought that by now, Makaburi is in God, by God's grace, we are here. By God's grace, we are here. And so media can perpetuate anxiety. Media can do that. Media can wrongly orient our perception of success. And so you, you post a picture on Facebook, and by the end, end of the day, we're going to 10 likes, and you now feeling like, oh, oh, you know, you've allowed people on the online space to define who you are. They are the ones who tell how successful you are. They are the ones who, and so you base, you, you put your, 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 your base on wrong platform. You allow wrong people to define you. You know, assertiveness is not built on other people's opinion. It's built on your confidence on God's word and what God says about you. You build your assertiveness around that, not on the opinion on, of people on the social media, the comments that they say about you. You know, they might give you comments, but what is God saying about you? I think your confidence and should come from that, right? Media can distract us from essentials. We spend a lot of time on media and we forget what is essential. We forget that to have a harvest, you are supposed to go in the farm, dig and put a seed on the ground and hope that God will bring the rain for the seed to germinate and grow into a harvest. But we waste time on things that are not essential, listening to gossips, listening to things that don't add value in our lives. So media can distract us from things that are essential and have us waste time on things that are not. And so, beside the negative influences of media, are there positive ones? And we want to look at that. The positive influences of media. Media X can be media can extend, you know, extending the congregation, right? Extending the congregation. What you are saying is that media can be used as a platform to extend our influence, and the online people are never on our physical space. The online people are, are on the online space, and so today, even as we do this, and we are being, uh, but. Uh, we are being helped by the use of media to be out there. We are speaking to people who would have otherwise missed it out. We are able to reach them in their spaces. And following the statistic that, that, that came, you know, during the pandemic, SITAM was able to reach a larger number compared to our, you know, our numbers combined. All SITAM assemblies Numbers combined, Valley Road, Woodley mentioned them. Our numbers combined could not beat the many people that we reached through the media platform during the pandemic. We reached many people in terms of, in, in terms of millions. 
and we thank God for that. So it's possible that we can extend. We can also expand our reach. Now, there are people who are Christians, but their nations don't allow for public, but you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't proclaim it publicly. And so they are meeting in bangers, they are meeting underground, underground churches. And so if we become intentional, we can decide that we'll be putting material on the online space so that those people who are disadvantaged can follow us in their bangers, in their underground churches. They can be able to get and enjoy the beauty of what you're enjoying here freely. It is possible to reach those people. Media as a cultural influencer, we can decide that we'll be, we'll be able to determine tests, values, and standards, and morals in our society. We can do that using the media provision. Media have great tests, uh, media have great levels of trustworthiness. Now, today, today, you will believe a TV more than a preacher. If a preacher came here and we are sweating and we are saying what we are saying, and a TV and the TV, the, the TV guys came here and just, you know, did their cameras and no voice, and then they're going out there, they put a voice over and they are throwing it out, you will believe what they are saying and forget you know, give less preference to what a man of God is saying. What we are saying here is that people readily trust what comes on media. And so as Christians, we can decide that because of that readily available favor, trustworthiness, we can put things that can benefit the people out there. The other day, I was following, I was on just seeing things around media, Facebook, and I saw a girl in the streets of Nairobi. She had a placard. Please help me pay my school fees. It touched me. It touched me. And it touched many other people. And in one hour, there were many thousands of comments, every, people feeling for that girl. And in, by the end of the day, the girl had gotten help Help had come through the power of media. People trusted that girl. They did not doubt that she was being used by somebody. They did not even have that in mind. Somehow the girl was taken back to school and was settled just because she went public in the media and did that. And media helped her amplify her concern. Otherwise, Angenda Nyumbani and you know, nobody would have known that. But media helped to amplify. And because of the trust, trustworthiness of media, people came through for her and they paid for her school fees. It is possible. Media, it can be, uh, it can be personal and, and private. Now, media can be personal and private. All that you need, all that you need is a smartphone, data, and headphone. Smartphone, data, and headphone. And you will be in another world. You will be in another world. Yes, sometimes you see people laughing. The man is just in another world. And I check out the you know, happening in other ends. And so what we are saying is that the advantage of media is that sometimes you don't, media, you, you not interfere with other people's spaces. You can just be in, another, in, in your world and follow things. And if we use that, we can reach people who are disadvantaged. They can just be in their world. You know, it can be personal and private. Media can be used as a voice. Media can be used as a voice. A voice to bring hope to the hopeless. A voice to bring life to the dying. A voice to bring reconciliation to the broken. A voice to bring light to those in darkness. A voice to bring sanity in an insane world. Media can do that. And so what is our bottom line? Media are permanent princes in our lives. We must determine on a daily basis how to use media and how to filter its content even as we create a wholesome content and use the media to establish the kingdom of God.
Praise the Lord. Now, parents have always been worried about their young people and the kind of interactions that they get on the media spaces. I want us to help us understand how we can help our young people who are the biggest clients and the biggest consumer of media products. Now, sit, da sit down as a family and discuss the pros and cons. You can determine that as a family you'll be sitting down with your children and you discuss, you discuss these things. Don't just leave it out to them to determine and find direction. You can, de you can determine that as a family you'll be discussing, you'll sit down on the table and talk about this. Help your children to differentiate between reality and fantasy. And media has a lot of fantasy. Those things have been, you know, there's a lot of graphic, uh, graphics and illusion. A lot of graphics and illusion. Edited work that defines, you know, media. The movies that they watch, those are edited, you know, work. A lot of graphics inside. And so that is not real world. The real world is where we live in. When the sun shines, it doesn't produce blue and red, green colors. The sun doesn't do that, right? You saw, and so in a movie, you hear some funny, you know, strange, threatening voices. Media, they are created with intention to cause fear. And so the sound is boom. We don't see that in real life. Right? We don't see those flaring colors when we walk. The real world is what we are seeing. But the movie will give you a different impression. Tell them that there is the, the movie life, there is the fiction world, and there is the real world that we are living in. It is your duty as a person, as a parent, to differentiate these two realities. I mean, the reality and the fantasy. Keep videos and TV games out of your children's bedroom. And am, am I talking to anybody here? Keep TVs and video games out of your children's bedroom. Use parental control. Get apps, apps that can help you verify, filter what they are seeing. You need an app and what you think is not right, you can easily control. Limit TV viewing to two or three hours. Do that by creating programs for them, other programs, other useful programs. They can go out in the farm, learn things, real life, other than staying by in front of a TV. Limit access to home internet and connection as, you know, limit that. And with parental guide, you know, you might not know exactly where your children are going when they're allowed to access internet. You can also encourage your teens to interpret media by putting forward some questions that they can ask. Allow them to ask questions. They should not just consume anything that comes in. Let them ask, who is behind that thing that I'm going to watch? Who is behind that, uh, that mot motivation? Who is behind? Who makes? What do they feel? You know, let them ask. Ask. They should not just be taking in anything. They should be asking some hard, tough questions, you know, before they consume anything that has been provided on the media space, you know. And uh, we are trusting that by doing so, we'll be able to help our children, our young people grow into people who are more responsible. And so, conquering the mountain of media. Is it possible that we can conquer the mountain of media? It is possible. We can conquer the mountain of media by adding the right voice. We can conquer the mountain of media by adding the right voice. Be intentional on what you dance to, which gallery you, you dance to. You know, the enemy is out there, but we can be intentional that our voice will compete for the same space. The enemy is competing for the same space, but we will also put things there that challenge the bad things that the enemy is trying to do. And so, as we bring this to a close, there is a call. There is a call. There is a call to the church. A call to you as an individual. A call to you who believe in the right values. 
to the church, to all Christians, is to rediscover. The word there is to rediscover. Rediscover the cultural mandate, embracing the opportunity to influence culture through the correct use of media. In the church, we must teach our, congreg our congregation about their calling and their cultural influence. They, the, the, uh, and the cultural influence they have by providing vital support to the cultural influencers and professional communicators among us, like what we are doing here today. Media, in particular, has a political and a spiritual and a persuasive power over us. Radio, TVs, press, etc. can manipulate whole society through the use of media. Political propaganda, advertising, and the so-called mind-bending power of media are long-standing causes of debate and concern. And, and so if you are a media person, you can determine that you will be an influencer in that space. Does it matter, and then there's a question here, does it matter to us as a church that this mountain of media and communication is also available to us to use for good in many ways? Does it matter to you? Does it matter to you that you have a responsibility as an individual to also influence that space beside posting your face? Does it matter to you that you can use that platform that's available for you to for a much you know, better use. We can influence this mountain of media without necessarily spending large sums of money if we invest to propagate the gospel of the kingdom of God through the right channels. The right channels are the ones that have the highest audience numbers and highest interaction and responses. A significant part of the calling of God's people is to embrace our responsibility to influence culture. Part of, uh, part of communicating the message of Jesus' love and grace to the world is promoting values that are based upon the word of God revealed to us in the Holy Bible. It has been said, values determine cultures. Cultures determines behaviors, and behaviors determine outcomes. And so, my parting shot, as you work with media, determine that you will be a positive influencer of that space. The Lord bless you. Amen.